Hello and welcome back to Vintage Farming. Right, we're just getting ourselves all set up here to get some rowing and baling done. And we are going to get it all done in one shot. Because that's just the way I prefer to do this. The chickens are very interested in what's going on. So we are going to lower it down, fire it up and get that helper set up. Let's get that. Ooh, there we go. Five's usually pretty good for that. Let's get into... There we go. Lower down and we are off. Now are they following? Yes, they are. So I'm very pleased that at least this windrow works with alfalfa, if not the, uh, the equivalent uh, tedder working with it, which is a shame because it would be nice to have the, uh, the, the pair of them. But this is uh, working just fine, so I'm very grateful for that at least. Um, yeah, we will do a bit of uh, actual, actually, yeah, I think I'll go straight on here, just to ensure that there's a, a bit of ease to this process, because I know that it can be a bit difficult for the uh, the baler at times to keep up, especially if we do really tight uh, turns and all. I do think that it will automatically drop the bale versus just stop when it's done. Um, but we should confirm that before we crack on. Let's see where they're at. Oh, they're nearly done. Okay, so we should find out straight away if it will in fact uh, drop automatically or if we have to go and manage it before we crack on. Wonderful. So there's a small chance, and I hate to say it, but a a very high chance that we will get too far ahead of the baler before the um, uh, before it's done because it'll probably stop as it sometimes does just because this goes so much quicker than the baler and the baler is stopping every bale <laughs> essentially every bale that is uh, created so yeah hopefully uh, it doesn't stop too soon but if it does I always just end up catching up to it and uh, and going from there so as long as I can do a nice couple of roundabouts at times I may stop and wait for it um, just to confirm that it is still following along but I think for the most part this first little bit is pretty simple especially with the uh, the headland if I do take my time overall it seems to work out quite well but if we do end up uh, having to stop and wait for it, that's fine. But I think the best way to uh, crack on with this, because we do want to move on to December as well. We do have rain coming, so ideally we'd want to shift these bales as well uh, before the rain. But if it is uh, during the rain, at least they will be shifted uh, one way or another before they sit in winter. But I think hey, we should probably go this way and around if we can. Yes, we can. But yeah, I think it would be best to try and clear them as well. But other than that, November is essentially done. And I don't... Oh, I think it said... Stopped. Oh, no, still going. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but yeah, so I will try and get this sorted, as I say, uh, quickly in a time lapse just to get it done. Oh, this is going to be bad. I hope the baler can fit through there without issue. Give it a nice wide sort of berth there, I suppose. Uh, oh, I should have gone that way. That's fine. We'll go down this way and then we'll sort it out. Anyways, we will crack on with a time lapse.
there we have it. That went actually really, really well. And I need to remember that for the next time that we do this job because that was absolutely the most efficient I've run this uh, field ever. So having basically giving just enough time for the baler to catch up a bit, but uh, while doing so, collecting the bales themselves. So because it does only provide a handful of bales anyways, this small field, but it is just enough with how often it produces or, re or regrows, I guess, um, that it is absolutely perfect. So yeah, we can just get this tucked away here. Should be fine, like, uh, put it a bit closer because I know we're going to be putting the uh, the mowing setup in there as well and the uh, the row again but yeah that worked out really really well um, I did notice though that I think the production now is fully full proper full so let's just park up the whoop hello <laughs> hello dual wheels bloody Nora let's just park this up here and we'll have a cheeky peek at the uh, at the TMR production just to see how we're getting on because it, it is clearly full or I just need to activate it ah right oh deactivate activate oh no it's out of space well that is a job for uh, this fella so we will take it down to the farm and get some TMR unloaded from the mixer and loaded into the cows all right here we go let's get loaded up and i could have put the uh, the silage uh, attachment on but uh decided yeah i'll just do it this way it's a bit easier and all so those bales should go fairly quickly considering that it does actually uh well it, i mean it goes quickly so that's kind of the big thing um let's have a look though how quickly it goes not taking it yet oh it might be taking from the bales that are there right that's fine that one will go straight away but let's in the meantime that unloaded right get the cows fed and there we go let's see how their food is doing as well oh yeah okay well we can easily bring in another full load that should be no problem. Now these are at 2,000 it says. I don't intend on selling them, but at what point do you sell off your aging Holsteins? Uh, or cows in general, as we've got the brown Swiss as well. But basically these five are, they have just reproduced if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we've got one, oh right, because it was the four males and the one right. And here we did get three males okay so they will be the next reproduce again but at what point does uh, I'm not too concerned about the value it's not like I intend on selling them on um, un until the, unless there is a point at which I should so if anyone has any insight into that please do let me know because they are my main milk producing cows and the fact that they are producing so much milk uh, is fantastic and actually someone did mention in a comment about raw milk production I don't know if that's an actual mod or not but uh, please do feel free to uh, to uh, to clarify that unless you just mean selling the the milk directly because if that is the case uh, then yeah that might be something I look into doing as well now I am going to still bring these over to the production because it is important to get that sorted uh, we'll keep it running really especially with how much silage we uh, we still have so, oh, yep, that bale's just gone. So these two will slowly start to disappear. And I believe there's two more. He'll put these up here.
Right, come on now. Sure, that's fine as well, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> Cheeky bales. Right, there should be... Oh, is that it? Oh, that's it. Right. Okay, no matter. Oh, actually, do I have the mod which allows me to remove a partial bale? I don't know if I have it on this one, but it's fine. We're going to need more alpha. We're going to be getting more alfalfa uh, bales anyways. Um, so, I think what we should do is leave that there for now. We'll get this put away. Now, I'm just trying to think of December. What what can we do? I, we might be able to sell some milk directly, uh, which I was saying before, that's possibly what you meant by raw milk production, just by doing it like that. But um, I'll have to double check on all that. It's very likely we will sell some milk directly just because the dairy that we have cannot produce it quick enough. Cannot produce butter or cheese quickly enough. Um, but we shall see. Right, okay, we can... Oh, right, we got to put the uh, tether away as well. I do, I do quite like this tether. Like I said in the last episode when we were faffing about with uh, sorting out the tether, I, I do quite like this one, so I'm glad, I'm glad in a way that we do still have it, but it would be nice to have a bigger, uh, older tether, but it's not a priority because this one does work for exactly what we need it to do. So that is very, very good. Let's get this tucked in just like that, and actually we can just leave the whole thing there. Let's go and check on. Oh, and here comes the rain. What timing is that, eh? Blimey. Okay, let's get this loaded into the cows one more time. I think one more should suffice. Um, I was planning on doing some uh, slurry spreading and, well, maybe muck spreading as well. But I think I'll wait until... I would, could even do it in December. It's just I like to keep those jobs for the, the times when it's not as unrealistic like during rain i don't think you'd, you'd spread slurry uh during the winter i don't think you'd spread slurry unless the ground is not frozen so we could possibly do some in in uh, december but hmm well sunflowers and corn are my next two crops so sunflowers into field 31 and corn into 33 so really we could even just wait until April, May, March rather, March, April. Um, oh, right, this is nice and finished. So this one does need it more than that for now. So I think, oh, we, actually 99 for alfalfa could do with it as well. So we'll just have to see. I won't be doing it in the rain. I think we are done with, actually, I'll just leave this parked up here for now. Because I think we're good for food for them for the time being. Yeah, that's loads. The milk as well is absolutely ridiculous. Um, oh, out of sp oh no, we need to get more. Okay, it's j okay. It's just <laughs> it's just gonna keep going until it's empty. So might as well do that one more time, um, just so we can get those alfalfa bales in, uh, bales in at the very least. But um, I wonder, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll just we'll move on uh, to December after this and see what needs doing but the animals are all fine we do have to check on the chickens but i think we have a bit of wheat in that we are rather oat that we can give them so i didn't bring all of the oat over to the factory but yeah we'll just do one more load and it may not take at all so that is fine but let's have a look at the chickens oh blimey okay let's uh no not what i'm after there we go oat right okay oat is probably uh, the best thing to do for them so let's go to right i'll get this what i'll do is i'll bring this over to the cows when it's full there we go i'll start the unloading process i'll park it up then i'll run to the mill get the other lorry and then we can get the chickens fed and then we'll move on to december all right here we go with the oat for the chickens i won't put it all in for now Actually, they, they don't take all that much anyways, do they? Let's, uh, let's see. I don't necessarily want to put it all in if they don't need it, but they will need it, so I might as well just get it done. Yeah, there we go. Right. 
We'll get this out of the way. In fact, I might just leave it here for now. We never come through this gate. We, we don't really have a, a need to go in there, really. But anyway, so that's sorted there. We've got milk in here. This is full, isn't it? Yeah. Now, how are they doing for food? It says they've maxed out, which means... Okay, we do have some left, so that's fine as well. Right, that is all sorted. So, as it's raining and uh, we are all done with November, we'll have a quick check in the sales, nothing. So, we will move on to December. See you then. Good morning and welcome to December. A bit cloudy, but a very gorgeous day we have here. That's the last of the TMR from the lorry. So I imagine that they're doing all right. Yes, they're doing fine. That milk, though, blimey. Okay, how about this? If anyone can suggest a production that can utilize milk, even if it's milk and, like, one other thing or some, something, I don't know. I haven't really looked into those because I usually sell the milk straight up because it does get a good profit or make butter or cheese. But our current butter and cheese production is relatively slow. Uh, compared to how much milk we actually have now. I don't know if milk production goes up uh, Or something or rather consumption here goes up uh, in the summer. I don't I don't know if that changes, but Yeah, if anyone has suggestions for a milk production that we can use that fits the vintage aesthetic Please do let me know because we've got so much milk and I think we're coming up to the time Oh, we've passed the time October what? It's usually September or January. Here, let's look at this instead. Right, yeah, September and January always seem to be the best. So maybe then we'll just wait for January to sell it. 1357. 1373. 1311. I mean, it's not bad. It is going up now. So I reckon that we don't have really anything to do. Oh, we have that to sell. How much have we lost? 2,000 and we lost on it already. We really should get on that. Let's confirm. Canola roll December. Yeah, we missed the highest opportunity. So let's go down there now. Um, yes, yeah, so let's take the tractor and trailer. I quite like this setup, to be honest. The Deutz on the trailer. So let's get that set up. We'll head over to the factory and we'll sell some canola oil. All right, after this queue of cars, we should be able to sneak in here. Right, there we go. Right, canola oil. Hello. Loads of it. Okay, let's get that beacon off. Might as well shut the engine off here. And that should be enough room for us to manage with our nice, new, barely used forklift. Which someone did mention goes seems to go quicker in reverse, and I think that's because it's a... It's a tractor that's going in, uh, sorry, in, well, technically in reverse for it. But yeah, let's, uh, yeah, what are we doing? Let's do stacks and then we'll do, and we'll do, uh, four basically. I wonder if more will spawn as we move this out of the way though. I reckon it will, but let's just wait to see. Now, there should be some lights in here, I imagine. That's a door. That's a door. Right, well, I suppose we could open the doors and get some more light in that way. Nope, there must be some lights somewhere. Hmm, maybe not. I mean... Yeah, there are definitely lights, but how do we turn them on is my question. Well, that's all right, I guess. We'll, we'll keep that closed. We don't need that open. Um, shame. Shame about the lights. Huh. Right, well, that's fine. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything that looks like a switch. So I suppose if there is one, please do let me know. But I'm just seeing switches for the doors, not for the lights or anything. So we may have to just put these lights on. Right, well, we're not seeing any more um, 
any more, what do you call it, pallets. So I think we're safe to do another stack of two. Oh no. Oh, yeah, this is a bit of a finicky forklift. But I find that anything that's uh, forklifting that isn't uh, base game can be quite finicky. Not even base game necessarily, but like this sort of thing. But as long as we're... Right, that's good. Okay, it's not bad. Yeah, I think that's the limit on it. You can see the... <laughs> even with that weight on the back, you can see that it's starting to lift. Oh, lost all vision there. That is cool, though. The shadow that it casts is pretty, pretty cool, to be honest. Just considering where the lights are positioned. Oh, and there we go. Nice. Right, well, this, uh, if you know what, I think we should put this into a, uh, a small time lapse as well, just to get this done, but also to sell at the same time. So let's see first where to sell. Oh, Coach Express, we know where that is. Just to confirm, it's right there, perfect. Might as well keep the beacon on and we'll crack on with it. Here we are at the sell point and the canola oil is selling. Right, let's remove that uh, beacon. Uh, it's very bright. 27,000 plus another little bit. Another seven, so not bad, about 35 or so. That's what it said uh, before. So that is all right and it's extra money in for us. So that is also very good news. Uh, we also have, um, no, 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 I think we're all done selling things for December, but we do have things to sell in January, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll confirm that once we're in January. Uh, what we need to do now is head, as we are heading back to the farm, uh, we do have to get, now can I make this turn, let's see, oh, not quite, possibly, oh, that's going to be a bit tight. But we've done it. Happy days. We'll just reverse into our normal spot there. Uh, yeah, we do need to get some uh, slurry spreaded. And I think with the temperature as it is now, even though it is December, it's not freezing. So that's really good. So let's try and see. Um, right, there we go. Now let's see the temperature before we crack on. That's not it. <laughs> right, one degree, it's above freezing, so let's do some of that. In fact, let's get it back in the Deutz, because I think that's the best tractor for these bigger, heavy jobs. Uh, whereas the, uh, the, the John Deere and the Z-Tour are better off for uh, grassland, even a bit of uh, drilling, rolling, that kind of thing. But these really heavy jobs are best with our uh, chief tractor, if you will, the biggest of the lot in the, in the Deutz DX140. I think it's 143 horsepower. All right, we are right there. What's going on? There we are. Uh, oh, yes, let's get it filled up fully. It is very dirty, though, and I know we're going to be dirtying it up again, so no point really in giving it a clean. Not just yet. This is heavy, bloody Nora. I wonder if we should try and get a weight fixed uh, onto the front of this. Right, we'll do the uh, we'll do this field first because I want to get it done. That's what the whole slurry is for. It, uh, for the alfalfa, we can use a manure, and I'm okay to do that. But let's get this done with some slurry. As you can see, it is working swimmingly well. <laughs> it's maybe. Maybe not the uh, the right word to use along with slurry, swimmingly, because you don't want to go swimming in the slurry. But what well, I mean, mind you, maybe might do. I don't know. It's not not my thing. But to each their very own. But yes, this is going well. 
Um, I'm very pleased that I split these fields. Uh, having the uh, that field there, still a large field to be honest. It would have been nice to be able to split it so that the poles are in the uh, in the middle there. But again, it's really not a big deal. We can easily uh, go around them or anything like that. Might as well just uh, do a bit of a headland first. Right, that was the part that was done by the helper on accident. So we can actually this might this might do the full. This might give it a full fertilizing, this one very small area. Or it won't fertilize at all, one of the two. Right, yeah, this should be a fairly quick job. And I reckon, I mean, if... Right, okay, because the planter cannot drill in... Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> yes, it lit, that's its literal job. Not fertilize while we're planting in, I may end up just doing... Slurry again on that field? But we've got more time. I think I'd rather do the alfalfa so that it's ready to go uh, when it's ready to go, essentially. Which I think is April or, or maybe March it starts, but I believe it is April. Um, but we should have enough slurry, hopefully, to at least finish this field. And then we can uh, worry about the other fields after that. Right, don't want to waste too much on those turns. But now that we've got a headland done and we've got grass in between the other fields, I think it's... a uh, easy up and down if you will I don't want to drive in that field if I don't have to because I don't think I can do so I'll just avoid it altogether if I can there we go right at least we're getting uh, this done yes it is a weedy field there's no question about that but we are in the process of fertilizing our soon to be corn field so let's crack on with the time lapse there we go now I think I might have missed a few bits here and there but and it looks quite rubbish it looks very spotty for some reason but I think we'll find out momentarily I think it is done you can see the, the weeds that have been destroyed there but let's see how the fertilizer is applied beautifully so yeah that did nothing that just went over it uh, so when we do it again then that will be good to go this one we might be able to do at the slurry but I'll probably wait until we have more just to, to just in case and then 99 I think I'll use manure for that because we're not going through nearly as much manure as I thought for the for this production as you can see it's still got loads in I don't remember how much we had put in initially it was definitely a couple of bucket loads but yeah um, we just don't go through nearly quick as I as I thought so good for seed good for manure water is good there all these are still producing we still somehow have lots of mustard it does produce very slowly as well same with the milk to butter and cheese but at least it's constantly selling which is very nice uh, food so this yeah this is full so we'll sort that out when the cows need food and then nothing is active here because everything is out oat corn yes honey we don't have any but that time will come uh, potatoes were the last thing so we might have some soup we do so that's cool uh, we have a little bit more canola oil but we might as well wait for the next actually we will uh, change that to storing for now uh, we should actually visit that to see if it's here let's just get this parked away I want to just visit over there just to confirm that it's not spawning them uh, we could sell one pallet if it's got it but I don't really fancy driving down to Kochi Express just to sell the one pallet so we might end up waiting for the next time oh yes I love this this uh, if I was going to say feature 
fact, but it is a feature of the uh, the garden, the open air garden, is that when it's winter, it's no longer open air because it's winter. So you've got proper doors on there, which is really good. I really love that. It is so nice to have a little enclosed greenhouse in the winter time, which is always why you can't uh, jump on into it because this is there even though you can't see it uh, in the non-winter times but that looks so good when with it on looks really really good right enough gawking at the garden <laughs> let's get as much of the slurry in as we can there's still quite a bit it seems uh, in there so let's fill it up and see how low does it go oh wow very good very good indeed pop to the mill here right so nothing has spawned so that's fine but I think uh, this is a good place to leave it. We'll leave it in view with the uh, Ford forklift, which we only got to use a handful of times so far. But as we produce more canola oil, more cereal, more potato soup, um, more eventually sunflower oil. We've got so many things that we're going to be adding in and creating here that I am very excited for it. So, yeah, we'll be using a forklift much more in the future. And it responds really well. Uh, with the four canola palettes so that's really good right as always thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed the video a cheeky thumbs up really does help out the channel and if you're new to the channel please subscribe so until the next one please do take care and bye for now